So pasta. Yes. You wanted to talk <laughs> about how you know how the psyche of of the people who are so protective of the squad. They're not just protective; they worship members of the squad Why? they like want to be them they exactly. look up to them they <laughs> deify them they're 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 it's like they have made them into superheroes and unfortunately pe there have been comic books by of the squad being superheroes and all and they already have so much power that they're not using for us right for to do any good for the people so People were saying that I was wrong, that, you know, this was a genuine effort by Cori Bush, that she, you know, has been unhoused. I'm not I'm not criticizing whatever she did before. She was an activist, whatever. She, there are videos and stuff of Cori Bush being an activist, etc. However, what I am criticizing is even if it came from, oh, we have to do something, it was done last minute last minute it wasn't pushed out at all it wasn't talked about at all before and of course it's led by her and only the staff members and the media that is 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 friendly to her and people who just buy into their crap it was not a very big protest at all we got more people in our protest without being celebrity congress people and at the end of the day, even though that doesn't matter, I'm just telling you they weren't inclusive. They didn't have work that many working class people in attendance. They didn't elevate those voices that are actually whose life depends on on this type of legislation. Right. And so I think we were proven right by the fact that these people, as you mentioned before, were kicked out when they wanted to continue protesting because one of the criticisms was like, OK, now we all go home. It's good. We got this. No, that's the bare minimum that they could have gotten bare bare minimum what they should have gotten the initial call was rent cancellation that was the initial call during the coronavirus if you recall yep. rent cancellation period Cancel end of rent. story people aren't going to be able to pay this back we're all the way down to oh extend the moratorium <laughs> and and people want to celebrate so when when these kids and these protesters went back to say okay we're going to stay until we get everything we want there was a handful of them only because Oh, we only go when Cori Bush and AOC are there because, oh, my God, I'm such a fan. One. Two, the media, the main media, right, didn't show up. There was a few media figures like Chuck Modi and Max Blumenthal who did show up and a few other uh, in indie journalists. And they saw that these kids were kicked out. There was a fence put in. So look at this video by Chuck Modi where uh, he, he asked the kid a question and the guy says they kicked us out in the street across the street they kicked us across the street previously we were guests of cory bush now we're just common people yep. so let's go ahead and watch no one is behind you on the steps could you tell me why they kicked us across the street uh because while we were here previously we were guests of representatives cory bush and aoc and now that they have reached a temporary resolution they're not officially hosting this anymore. So we are just common people and we've been kicked across the across the yard to the grassy area there. We were told that we weren't allowed to have signs mm -hmm. because that would be a demonstration and we, you would need a permit for that. And we can assemble more than 19 people at a time because that would be a demonstration and you need a permit for that. And but, we don't have that. But, but those rules didn't apply when Representative uh, Corey Bush and AOC and others were here. No, they, they allowed us to be here with chairs and food and mm -hmm. umbrellas and stuff. We were allowed to sit here overnight. Mm -hmm. And once the representatives left, then our our, gra our graces were up with them. <laughs> and you, you were mentioning, and, and so folks know that you've been somebody who has been out at the post-George Floyd protests, mm -hmm. you know, since the beginning. Mm -hmm. And um, you were commenting, commenting to me in the last few days how nice and uh, the the police were you yeah were it was weird because normally there it's us it's us versus them cops versus protesters we get beaten we get tear gassed we get yelled at cursed at pushed around punched run over with bikes and while we were here they they still enforced the rules but they were very polite and professional about it which i thought might have been a difference between capital police versus mpd but i think it's just because the representatives were out here with us and they were actually the ones hosting us what, what was the type of behavior the police were in the last few days that you were seeing that was unusual they weren't cursing at us they weren't, <laughs> they weren't shooting at us uh, they were they were very professional like how you would expect police officers to act mm -hmm. 
uh, and that hasn't been the case over the last year. It's, that's why it was noticeably awkward. Right. So we talked about this, right? Before I got caught off in my speech, one of the things that I was attempting to say was that during the Assange uh, rally and the Met, uh, Force of Vote rally, we had more cops surrounding us than there were protesters, like ready to arrest us with zip ties, because that is a threat. That is an actual threat. People rising up, even in small numbers, because that movement can grow. That when you're actually challenging the status quo, you will always have police stand on the side of the status quo because they're there to protect. Mm. They're they're the stormtroopers to protect the empire. That that's <coughs> what they're supposed to do. That's what they're there to do. Don't don't get it twisted. Um. So when I didn't see police surrounding the Capitol steps during this whole ensemble, when I didn't see this uh, aggressiveness that I have documented, Johnny has documented, Pasta has seen. We have seen this uh, over the past year and a half. For the BLM protests, for the any protests, even Palestine, where they had the, the barbed wire, the the Free Palestine protests, we have seen the way these police have reacted to us compared to how they're reacting when there's a congressperson. The rules don't apply to them, you guys. They have different rules. The one percent, the predator class, and they are part of it, has different rules. Those in power have different rules. That's why they treat them like they're human beings. They don't treat you like you're human beings because they're, you're not. You're you're a threat. And if all of you rise up, you're an even bigger threat. Yeah. So that was my whole point and and, and and talking about that because to me, while progressives continue to blame Republicans and blame just, you know, this whole left-right paradigm um myopic view of 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 politics into oh the republicans and the the white domestic terrorists and all this crap while they continue to do that it is progressives that are continuously standing in their way it is progressive that and and the democratic establishment in the democratic establishment like the squad like you know several members like rokana who was supposed to be a progressive all these people it's it's their actions and the actions of the democratic party that prevent any sort of revolution from happening any sort of remotely like actual change to the system from no. happening i think that they are more of a threat and more of a danger than the actual republicans right because the republicans are out there and they're saying we disagree with this this is what we believe this is our ideology where the democrats uh, especially when it comes to the progressive members progressive members uh they act like i said like you're your friends and your loved ones and they care and they they, they we're united by our values so now then you buy into them whatnot but every single chance they get to screw you yep. especially when it comes to the vote which we've shown today and two separate bills which they're supposed to be that's their number one and two issues they're gonna screw you and that's the way it goes they are the more of a danger than in the republicans and that's why and, and this is something that nam chomsky talks about that's why he's critical to the left media he's critical to the to the to the Democrats and stuff like that because first of all they speak at a higher intellectual level than a lot of the Republican media out there right uh, so therefore they can trick you a lot easier too and they can get things by you so that's why it's important for us now to call them out for who they are and whatnot nobody really any true progressive should not be with the squad anymore they've showed their colors across the board they should have been left in the dust a long time ago and it's really sad that you're still trying to play this game and try to re re erect these other kind of establishment Democrats like Jimmy Gomez and all these other people to make them look like they're really good when they can't even show up for debates yeah. and take nothing but PAC money. Well, and and again, and this has been talked about, you know, and I'd like to have like a like a Caleb Maupin or some one of those people to talk about this. Uh, maybe I'll have Esha on because we when we've read Lenin and you read all, all of these things that have happened in history, because if you want to know about the future, you have to study history. And this has been also in the past when during the uh, Lenin time and, and there was the the attempt at revolution it wasn't the people that were outright obviously fascists that really got in their way as much as the people who were outright obviously the the fake socialists the fake you know revolutionaries they weren't there for real revolution they were doing theatrics and enabling the fascists in their own way because they were in forcing the people to think that there was a uh, a hope in rebranding and reforming the current system and there wasn't and every time a revolutionary would actually come and say no stop listening to these people they're doing theatrics stop like they would come in and rebrand themselves and present themselves as allies when they wouldn't be and that was what was stopping them this side from fighting at all from fighting the real enemy right and right now our real enemy is are truly 
the the class like the empire the predator mm -hmm. class those as a whole they might be republican they mm -hmm. might be democrat they might be whatever that's our real enemy the state agencies right now we can't even fight fight that because we're too busy trying to expose still that that this this duopoly is an illusion that it's mace it's an oligarchy yep, yep. so um another thing i wanted to show is that while this is happening and all of this is true emma <laughs> makes a tweet where she uh gets to call her That's friend it. anna uh sp spitting fire right and she said some fire from my girl anna kasparian and then max blumenthal goes days after attacking progressive legislators for not being tough enough on the homeless population which is what we showed in our video from yesterday suburbanite neocon hmm. anna kasparian accuses me of harassment for politely asking cory bush one critical question in an otherwise friendly interview but shut down by her angry staff that's exactly what happened we all saw the video we all saw how uh he was really nice and friendly he led with the easy questions and the, which is the, the, the you know the go-to journalist way to do it right you start out easy and then you just get them with the with the second or third question and and she couldn't answer it and when she started answering it her staff came in they wouldn't even allow her to answer so is Cori Bush even in control of her own like answers no. no like it's just it, it's just really sad and that's very telling too, fam with the fact yeah. that they came in the way they did it's like who who had the rights and the know-how to say okay we can't we got to get in here right now we got to save her whatnot the overlords the bosses the the, right. the notes coming down from the donors in the predator class saying this is what they can talk about this is what they can talk about and if she gets pushed back on this go save her get in there and right. that's exactly what they did and again tyt if you know if you don't think tyt has like a connection to these campaigns because AOC and all the squad only go on their shows. They only go on their shows. Um, they have the one of the uh, spokespersons for uh, AOC go after Max Blumenthal, go after, uh, I, I, I think they mentioned Franco and others that were there criticizing the, the squad and the protest. Like they already had like a whole person put out a bunch of tweets like defending. Oh, no, that's not what happened. And then, of course, TYT and Emma and all these, you know, people from my majority report, they retweet it and they like they pretty much convey what these the 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 P, like the PR like narrative management for the the squad that's what they're there to do they're there to say no no the squad is in the right these meanies these mean awful rude clowns are there like you know, ruining it they don't they're making it about themselves even though they're trying to expose yeah, them about wh how this is not really what what they're talking about how they're having photo ops with adam schiff and and like god damn it adam fucking schiff like are you serious and and chuck schumer and all these people coming in Jimmy and, and just, just just it's so gross dude yeah. it's so gross and so by pointing that out now you're mean like we're not we're not here to serve politicians and of course anna was narrative management nar narrative managing we talked about this yesterday with franco what she did um and again reiterating the point driving home this point because there was an article released that i think was a little clickbaity because it said nancy pelosi killed medicare for all she's been killing it guys she she she's never put it to a floor vote that's the that's the whole point but i want you guys to watch this video i found this video that was very little talked about from a few months ago um where nancy pelosi reiterated that she does not support medicare for all in spite of of course being in a pandemic in spite of her previous support for universal health care a long time ago i think it was 93 or 94 and in spite of her district she says i know my district overwhelmingly uh, supports it she talks about not having the votes but then she also says she just believes the path is is uh forward is through the aca let's watch 1993 you were one of 90 congress members to sponsor a medicare for all style single-payer health care bill and advocated extensively for the legislation you testified in favor of the bill in the house rules committee like i did nearly three decades later requesting a floor vote on the bill you said that you supported the bill in part because of its quote savings savings which which spring from early intervention people seeking and receiving health care earlier in the game so that they don't have more costly health care and hospital stays it is interesting to see how under scrutiny, when people really take the look at these bills, how brilliantly uh, the single payer plan uh, stands out. It has support in my community, uh, it has support across the country.
Do you still support single payer health insurance? Speaker Look Pelosi. My comments far preceded the Affordable Care Act. Uh, I believe that the Affordable Care Act has better benefits than Medicare has, and I have made that clear. Uh, strengthening Medicare was very much a part of the Affordable Care Act. We took funds from one place where the Republicans wanted to put them and <laughs> put them to the extend the solvency of Medicare because that is essential. It's a pillar of econ economic and health in our country, that we want to expand the benefits by uh, having the, the uh, secretary negotiate for lower prices is a very much a priority for us. But since the 25 years or more almost uh, of, of when we were fighting for that in the Congress, uh, we didn't get it and we don't have the votes to get it now. I, you know, I know 153 sounds like a good number, but it ain't no 218. And uh, again, we, th we see it as let's strengthen it as we did in the Affordable Care Act Let's expand it by having it negotiated lower prices. Let's see how much money we have there to afford lowering it. Uh, but I am not a supporter of Medicare for All. However, it is very popular in my district. But I didn't want to be, uh, uh, I'm, I myself think the path to uh, med uh, healthcare for all Americans is a path down the road of the Affordable Care Act. What she doesn't tell you is that she takes money from big pharma and insurance companies and the majority of the Democrats do as well. And that's why they are for, so for the ACA. That's why they're there to keep pharmaceutical, the pharmaceutical industry there in negotiating something that shouldn't be negotiated. Uh, you know, medicine shouldn't be up for negotiation. You're talking about uh, creating a, a system where people can get the medicine they want, whether, you know, in our opinion, in my opinion, in particular, it should be also include medicinal marijuana and other other, you know, substances that could help to alleviate without relying on opioids. Obviously, we have an opioid crisis in America that could be talked about. But no, like that they're not, you know, they're not doing that. She's not going to do that, guys. She's not. She's saying, I don't support it. Yeah. And then she's saying, oh, we don't have the votes for it. But imagine if we did have the votes for it. She still wouldn't fucking support it. She's telling you there that she's not going to support it because she is backed by corporate interests and her corporate interests won't fucking yeah. support it. She used it as a campaigning tool. She was never really intended to go out in there and fight and get it and whatnot. And that's what the, the squad's doing, too. Same exact thing. Nancy Pelosi is a blueprint for what you see AOC to be down the road, okay? A lot of gaslighting, a lot of out there with this and this and that, but yeah. never go and get your, sink your teeth into the legislation and get it passed. They're not going to do it. And how disgusting is it that she's doing it to a person, that, that gentleman who's got a fucking- ALS. Yeah, I mean, you know, and she's sitting there, I don't support helping you out, you know what I'm saying? I, I support giving the Affordable Care Act, which <laughs> which was a disaster. It really was a disaster. Yeah. It, it, it It's, it's strengthening it, it was a give out to the insurance company. And, and, and she that's wants what to strengthen that. Yeah. yeah. They're there to strengthen that. And yeah. And it, it, again, you're right. Exactly right. AOC, because this happened 27, over 27 years ago. Right. Over 27 years ago, this uh, she was out there supporting universal health care. And now look. And AOC talked about a 30 year plan to get health care for all that. That's why people compare her to Pelosi, because she's literally dangling a carrot for people who don't have the time to, to wait. For, for this basic minimum shit we shouldn't even be discussing. Um, and oh, here comes this one. So I know Pasta was going to enjoy this one because oh, yeah. our friend Ryan Grimm, our, uh, Ryan Grimm is a good friend of mine. Um, Ryan Grimm decided to blame Republicans for Nina's loss effectively, right? Because he said progressives, including Nina Turner, pushed or pushed hard for open primaries. And this analysis find strong evidence of a significant number of people who typically vote Republican choosing a Dem ballot to oppose Turner over Israeli uh, over Israel. So um, they're really going to go with this shit right now without can, any data to back this out yeah. whatsoever. So this, this is, is a from fucking the, talking point gone wild. This is from dansdeal.com. It says in the most heavy, most heavily religious Jewish precincts, Beachwood A went to Brown with 338 votes, 91.1% over Turner with 33 votes. And Beachwood B went to Brown with 358 votes, over 89.7% over Turner with 41 votes. About 42% of the votes in these precincts were for Trump in 2020, but only 17 people voted for the Republican primary ticket 
yesterday. So Oh, so um, they did throw a little uh, numbers in there. Uh, yeah. Congratulations, whatnot. That doesn't mean anything. Yeah. I, I would need to know uh, more specifics about this type of survey, who they surveyed, because if it's like a, a, a pro-Democrat survey, you're only going to get Democrats. Like you're, that's it's basic statistics 101. Your sample size needs to be representative and big enough yeah. for you to consider this a valid poll. Ryan Grimm doesn't know anything about elections. He doesn't know anything, and it shows. Again, I don't care what you think. We cannot say with 100% accuracy that this election was fair. One, obviously special interests are involved from the get-go, and Nina Turner was at a disadvantage. Obviously, it's not fair. But apart from that, we can't look into the, the, the ballots. We can't check the machines. We can't have audits. So how can you tell me that this election was fair? People are like, yeah, they found no evidence. I saw all the California Democrats attacking me because Lauren Steiner put out on her Facebook, oh, Fiorella has gone crazy. Look at her. She's, she's saying that everything's rigged now blah 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 yes we don't have fair elections in this country you fucking moron we don't like if we did we wouldn't have this problem i'm trying to help fucking progressives because you're so idiotic and, and stuck in your ways that you think that we live in a justified society where you have fair elections and your vote fucking counts and until you stop believing that we're not going to get anywhere so yes no we don't have fair elections you cannot tell me that this election was fair we're consistent here when we if we're going to talk about Trump and his election we're going to talk about the progressive elections why because they're 90 more than likely they're not accurate we don't know I, you can't prove to me that they are because we don't have audits yeah. And, yeah. and these people that uh, from the California Democratic Party, there's no evidence of that. OK, show me your no evidence of that. How, how, how do you show no evidence of that? Please. Well, is there not it? Uh, do we have access to the ballots? Do you do you know this is proprietary software? Do you even know what type of machines Johnny pulled it up the other day? Do you even know what that means? Do you even know how uh, Ohio elections are run? No. So how can you tell me that this election was fair just blatantly? Yeah. And nobody's talking about this because this is the issue that they completely just push aside and say, well, next time Nina just needs to run with better people and just have blah, 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 blah. And they're going to keep doing the same thing yeah. and expecting different results. And Insanity. The, and this particular number over here, that's a difference of 620 votes. And that's not what's won this election. Okay. When you look at those numbers, 338, 358, and you minus the uh, 74 votes from Nina Turner, that's less than, you know, that's just a little bit over 600 votes. That's not going to swing an election when there's almost 40,000 votes to the winner. That's just not going to, to swing it. Um, and, you know, I, like I said, I'd like to see the cast vote records. I'd love to get a hold of them. And I'd like to take a look and see where the majority of the votes came from. I, I would guarantee you, I'm going to make it, put it out there right now, that Chantel Brown won the majority of mail-in votes. I'm going to put a guess out there. We'll see. We'll get those numbers and we'll take a look. We'll see how many mail-in ballots yeah. she got as far as voting for her, as far as increasing polling that day. I'll, we'll take a look at that. So uh, and, and, and that will give us more of a hint of what's going on. And it's not like uh, de like Republicans. Yeah, some of them are pro-Israel, but it's some of them are not. Some of them are not like some of them are not at all. That's hello. Yeah. <laughs> That do you should know that by now. It just to use it on that whole surface level, like oh yeah, they're they're just it's because of Israel, so they voted against her. Most Republicans aren't going to care about that race. They're going to vote for the Republican. Yeah. Like what are you talking about? You're saying that Republicans led to this, and so now we shouldn't have open primaries. What? Like that's kind of what he's suggesting yeah. here. And uh, Shauna Burley posted this tweet. No, Nina Turner. No, um, now that your election is over, is not the time. The time was. When we had the Medicare for all events across the country and you pretended they didn't exist, don't act like you care now. Because Nina Turner said yesterday, time for Medicare for all. U.S. healthcare system ranks dead last among rich nations. Again, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And so she 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 uh, she finally talks about Medicare for all after her election. Do you see like what the hell is going on here? Like, oh, let's now that we're done campaigning <laughs> to try to placate to the establishment. Let's talk about Medicare for all that wasn't the right time and so my whole point in that section was the the democratic establishment and their little minions now in the squad that are pretending to be anything different are the actual threat to any sort of progressive revolutionary change period they're the ones not the republicans not yes like they're a problem but we can't even we can't even face that problem at all because we we're, we're too busy over here and that's what these people don't get. They criticize us. Why? Why does Jimmy Dore and Glenn Greenwald in the combo couch only go after the squad? Why don't they ever go after the right? They must like them better. 
Um, because again, the right doesn't get our donations. The right doesn't get our attention. The right isn't out there saying they're fighting for these the things. Right. Like they're not saying that I, I'm focused on the people that are pretending to be something they are not because those people are fucking a fox. They're 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 fox. They're not showing you the 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 teeth under their fucking smile, and that is so much fucking worse. Yep.